World of Warcraft needs to learn to move on, and I think Blizzard knows it too. Let's be real, Warcraft is old. Wait a second, older than that. Yeah, even older. There, perfect. World of Warcraft is coming up on its 20th anniversary, and the Warcraft franchise itself is near 30. At this point, Azeroth probably knows what a 401k is. With any universe that's been around for this long, the lore starts to pile up. Yeah. You've got games, thousands of quests, in-game lore books, actual books, comics, cinematics, and any other type of media that can fit in big shoulder pads and oversized boots. True. Yo, true. On that note, so I've had Chronicle Volume 4 on pre-order. I pre-ordered the World of Warcraft Ultimate Visual Guide, because I don't have that, and it, and it has some entries on things like Amonthul in there that I want to f***ing read. <clears throat> Four or five new entries to the, to the collection. Um, at this point, I've already f***ing... I've already got, you know, I might as well just collect them all. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, chat? I got more than I'm, than I'm missing, okay? There's a lot of story in Warcraft, and that can be a bit of a problem if Blizzard doesn't treat the universe in the correct way. In an effort to be fully transparent, I really like that Warcraft. That better, of course. As you can tell with all this. And I also make an effort to keep this channel positive and respectful towards the lore, as I think it can be a bit overhated at times. True. However, if you ask me what I think the biggest problem with the Warcraft universe is, he's not watching right now. I'd no, have I to say, it just can't let go of the past. What do I mean by that? Well, Warcraft is kept to a pretty small cast of characters over its lifespan. And while a ton of other characters exist, any major event happening is going to reach into this hat and pull out one of these core characters. Well, the franchise is coming up on its 30th anniversary. I don't know about that. T I know that this is like, I'm not going to pause on everything I disagree with, but I don't know about the take that WoW has a small cast of characters. That's an interesting take. There's a lot of characters. And there's a lot of characters in WoW. I think he's talking about like main characters though, like your Thrall, your Jaina. Sour Fang. I, I don't know. Like, characters shift in and out of that main character space so often. Like, Garrosh was like a main character at one point, but then has, you know, kind of not, kind of become one, you know, late, not one later. Arthas was a main character at one point, then became not one later. So, I guess if we're looking at cast that's been around the whole time, we're talking like Warcraft to now, we're talking Thrall, we're talking Jaina, we're talking Malfurion, we're talking Tyrande, we're talking Maya of Shadow Song, we're talking Illidan Storm Rage, we're talking, uh, phew. Kef, I guess Karen's dead, but <laughs> uh, Bane. <laughs> I mean, I guess that's probably like the core. Your Varian Rin, your and I don't know Andu and Lothar and all those older characters. Like they're like Uther and them. They're like they're like kind of core characters, but they're not. Your Sylvanas, your Illyria, your Toralian, your Varys. Like there's so many characters. So I guess I have to like narrow my vision of like what are the main characters. And so that's probably what he's referring to is like the, the real main cast isn't that big, but any given expansion, that cast fluctuates. Rathian, the dragon aspects, you know what I mean? Like there, there's Gendraymane, you know, Bolvar 4 dragon, Magni Bronze, Beard, like they're, they're, it's a pretty big cast. But this, I think that only even furthers his point about like, it being a little overwhelming sometimes because there's so many <laughs> characters. So I just wanted to put that out there that, that I feel like there's a lot. Anniversary? Some of these characters are old. Yeah. Well, I get that figureheads are deeply loved by players. Right. Okay, here we go. Having them yeah. stick around like this is starting to muddy their story. And that can only lead to the eventual completion of their tale to be unfocused. Let's use Sylvanas as an example. What used to be one of the greatest characters in the franchise now makes people very upset when you talk about her. Her story started out as the Ranger General of Silvermoon, who lost her life defending the city and or doing a sick ass Bowers life. I have no time for games. So honest is fing hot. She'd then be raised up, by Diana? Arthas and forced to serve in his scourge. However, through sheer determination and spite, she'd break free from his control and do everything in her power to see him meet his end. Along the way, she'd become the leader of the Forsaken, the undead citizens of Lordaeron who had met a similar fate to her. A people who had been wronged and cast out and forgotten, pushed away by their still living kin. Genuinely grade A stuff, one of the best stories in the franchise. And then, we get him. Arthas dies. With her sole purpose to continue living gone, Sylvanas would become aimless. 
However, her people need her, so she continues on. Her story from here would evolve into trying to secure a way for her people to continue to exist by creating new Forsaken, instead of simply letting their culture die out. By the way, what is, what actually is that? Need her, so she continues on. What actually is the soul cage? Did we ever like get clarification on what that thing actually is? Is it like an artifact of domination given to her by Helia? Her story from here would evolve into trying to- What, what is it? She has rings floating around her and it's coming from a bluish white magic. It's really hard for me to not see that type of thing. The cure away for people to continue. Like what the f Is that, is this thing an artifact of domination? I just didn't even like realize it. It's interesting. You do exist by creating new Forsaken instead of simply letting their culture die. The way it like, it like, anyway, sorry. I gotta let this guy f***ing talk. I'm like, I'm like theory crafting on the soul cage. <laughs> Mid video. Forsaken, instead of simply letting their culture die out. Again, great stuff. Eventually we're gonna start running into some problems though, because in Legion, Sylvanas was inexplicably declared the war chief, which let's be real was probably mostly because of how popular she is. Now we need to move the story forward around that. Well, I don't know about, I don't know about that take. It doesn't seem like Sylvanas was, maybe, uh, maybe he's right, but <clears throat> the idea that she was randomly selected as war chief and that there wasn't a further plan at play, even at that point is an interesting take. I feel like that's kind of what's being insinuated here is that she was given the mantle of war chief and then they had to write her story all of a sudden in accordance with that act. It's like, well, why do we look at it as like a random thing that doesn't fit in her story? Like, why don't, it's kind of, it's just like a weird perspective to me. It's like, it's like, this has always been an interesting perspective of people who claim that something happened for a particular reason when they didn't write it. <laughs> I just, I get confused. Like, how do we know the motivation? How do we know, how do you know that there wasn't something that they weren't already planning it. I guess that's kind of where I get hung up on these types of suggestions and insinuations is like, they literally, it, but they wrote it through. <laughs> like they wrote through it. Like, I don't know. It just, se it, seem it seems like it kind of, how do you, how do I say this? How do you determine how someone else is, is supposed to write their story or like where a character belongs or where they don't belong or like, it's just like a very interesting thing. I feel like we often try to take our our opinions and try to make them some type of like objective truth when talking about storytelling and, and literature. I, I feel like it's very, it's very strange. I, I don't know. She's always seemed more interested about the Forsaken than the Horde, but like there's character development, people change. I, th I feel like for Sylvanas, the biggest problem with her character is the order of, of, of events. We're like, we are only given the context and, and inner thoughts after things have happened. And to make compelling villains, you need to have them express those things during the happenings of events. That's why Emmett Selk is such a powerful and effective villain in Final Fantasy XIV is because he opens up to you at least a little bit. He lets down that fucking, that, that veil just a little bit so that you can see a little bit of where he's coming from and it makes him significantly more relatable. World of Warcraft just isn't, isn't, doesn't seem to be as quite of well equipped to handle those types of nuanced storylines in the game because they seemingly prefer to deliver those nuanced pieces of storytelling in, in books and things like that, which is a shame. Legion, Sylvanas was inexplicably declared the war chief, which let's be real was probably mostly because of how popular she is. Now we need to move the story forward around that. Legion comes and go, and then we got Battle of Azeroth, where this story just goes completely off the rails. We start to see Sylvanas betray everything she stood for, saying things like she wants to kill off hope, or that the Horde are nothing, a complete character assassination in record time. Then we have Shadowlands, where things just go to an entirely different level, which I don't want to dig into. But the point being, Sylvanas went from probably the most popular character in the franchise to the most divisive yep. because her story just True. keeps going. It just proves to you, chat, that nobody, no character is immune. There is no character who is just so fucking cool that no matter what you do with them, people are just going to accept it. That's not, 
Nope. It doesn't matter if it's Illidan, Sylvanas, Jaina, Tyrande. It doesn't matter. As soon as they cross a certain line, there's some things like the burning of Teldrassil that people just cannot... You can't, like... There's no, there's no forgiveness. Like, there's no forgiveness for that. It's, it's just a completely unconscionable unnecessary act of complete cruelty and malice and in fear really it's it's just it's so irreconcilable it's just it's 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 just it's too much for people it's too much and you guys you guys will you guys will notice look at my background look at all this amazing shit that I'm blessed to have in my life thanks to you guys and other people all these books I got final, I got World of Warcraft little statues from BlizzCon. I got collector's editions. I got all that stuff. You know what I haven't put back out? I haven't put back out my print of Sylvanas burning Teldrassil. It's one of the only things that I have that I didn't put back out. And, the, and part of the reason why is just because I just, even for me, I just have a hard time. I have a hard time. I just have a hard time with that. It's just... It's tough. It's t I just can't really. It's tough. At a certain point, it should have reached a natural conclusion with a new character taking the reins of the Forsaken. But instead, we now have this corpse of a story we need to deal with that'll never totally corpse. be resolved. Corpse of a story. I see what he did there. Nice. For that reason, for the health of Warcraft, we need to start letting go. A lot of the main characters are old enough to have kids or already do. I think it's time we start passing the torch to some of these younger characters and let the old pillars of the franchise take a much needed break. Yep. I agree. And then you bring them back for the final battle and everyone does the thing at the end. Before we dig into the why though, I want to take a quick moment to let you all know that I've launched my Patreon. Creating videos has been a lot of fun and if you'd like to support me directly, then I would greatly appreciate that. There's only two tiers at the moment, a $1 tier that gives you special on my Discord and ad-free versions of my videos, as well as a $3 tier that gives you access to early previews as alongside some other goodies. These tiers also include the obligatory shout out at the end of my videos, you know, YouTube stuff. I used to do There's this. There's a lot of fun stuff I plan on doing We should Patreon. do Patreon again. I haven't done it in a long time. It was kind of cool. I got to give, I got to do like little bonus content questions, Q and A's and stuff for Patreon. That was kind of fun. It's been a long time though. It just became obnoxious to manage and I wasn't fulfilling it very well so I just got rid of it I didn't feel right about people pledging money even I just didn't feel right about that there was people that who kept their pledges active and I just I just didn't feel right about it because I wasn't delivering on on content anymore and so I just got rid of it because yeah John's so I hope to see you there but yeah all right let's get back to our regularly scheduled rambling so why do I think this is so important well, the only reason I'm as attached to the lore as I am is because of a character that only got the spotlight because it was time for someone else to move on. Anduin Rin. Hmm. As you could probably tell from my Anduin video, I really like him as a character. Me too. As to why is for a myriad of reasons, but I think a core component is that his first time in the spotlight coincided with when I started the game. Okay, so if you're one of my older viewers, shout out to the 60 plus. Actually, same. <laughs> Yo, actually, same. I started in Mists of Pandaria, and that's... Anduin was a goofy little f back then, but... His dialogue with Rathian and his presence throughout those quests, I think... Started to get me interested in him, and the way that he... Didn't trust Rathian, like... He's just kind of like wise beyond his years, Anduin Rin. He always f has been, and... It's just like... It's that wisdom, and, and even really more so that patience that he taught Varian, that just like... Anduin's just like the... 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 The model for what, <laughs> for like the kind of person that I want to be, you know, like someone who's thoughtful and compassionate and has empathy and is really considerate and doesn't shy away from his struggles and really seeks to move past them and isn't afraid to accept the advice and support of other people to get there because he realizes he's not supposed to do it all by himself. And I just really love Anduin. He's just such an insanely good character plus crowd i respect the hell out of you you may want to sit down for this i started the game in mists of pandaria Woo! and i just got the battle chest and everything else my man on azeroth yo same bro are we the same person this is what my stepdad got he got the battle chest 
And I started with this and I was playing I was playing vanilla and I got through that and then I started playing TBC and I did all that and I did it all solo and I was just questing through zones and I did my nether dragons and got my drakes and then I went to wrath and I fucking st stormed Northren and did Ulduar and killed Yogg-Sarod and fought the Lich King and uh, did all that stuff at level. And then uh, that was when Kata, Kata was like 25 bucks and Miss was the newest expansion. And I couldn't afford it because I was like a 16 year old kid. And uh, in and uh, I can't remember how I got Cataclysm. I think it went on sale, and I and my one of my I think my friends I think my friends bought me Cataclysm, and then we did Firelands and we did Dragon Soul and I did Deathwing's back at level, dude. Oh, oh my God, that was the worst decision of my life. Um, uh, I remember back then you had to actually do the dispels and debuffs on that, otherwise you you just die. And then, uh, and then one of my friends, John, I've said, told this story before. He came to stream one time, even actually, like six six months ago, something like that, a year ago maybe. And he was like, "Hey, man, we, we me and the boys have been playing Mr. Pandaria, and you know, it's been really fun to hang out with you on Skype and stuff, man. Would you do you want? I'm I was thinking about I could just get you Mr. Pandaria." <laughs> and I was like, "Dude, shut the f up! No way!" So he bought he bought me Mr. Pandaria, and I remember like going around Jade Forest and like. Uh, hunting, I remember camping on the cliffs up here to get the Zandalari Warbringer because I wanted to get the mounts and like John showed me where to find them and and how to and took me to world bosses and oh dude The nostalgia is just it's just and I never would have done it I never would have done it if 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 my stepdad didn't want to try the game which he ended up not caring about And if I hadn't found people who wanted to play with me and I think that's like that's like the fucking core like missing experience from MMOs for me nowadays is that like I just don't <laughs> I, just, I just don't have that really like you know those random friends that you know at that time I didn't have a YouTube I didn't do YouTube or any of that stuff just like random people you know and so there's no extra factors or anything and I could just gush about Miss of Pandaria forever dude it's just like the music dude do you guys remember the fucking login screen music dude and it showed the veil of eternal blossoms dude and it oh my god I just Sorry, Mr. Pandaria is the most underrated expansion ever. It, it, it's the most underrated, and it's only because of pandas. That's the only reason. It's the only reason. Don't ask Classes it. were fun. You had challenge modes. Join this. You had in Throne of Thunder, one of the greatest raid tiers of all time. Siege of Orgrimmar was insane. It just lasted 14 months. We didn't need a month for each boss in the raid. A little ridiculous. But then they also implemented Mythic, so they shifted, they brought out a new difficulty at the end of, of it, which is part of why we had it for so long. And you, dude, you're like, those shitty typical rep grinds, dude, the f***ing anglers and the tillers and all that shit. You had the shadow pan, you had the th Isle of Thunder, where you, oh man, the green fire, warlock green fire, codex of Zoroth, like, oh shit. Ah, oh, so much good shit, anyway. I was 12, and I just got the battle chest and everything else I need to start my was journey 12. on Azeroth. I joined this world Damn. of storied heroes and dragons, and man, I was hooked. And of course, when you have a younger character whose story is very reflective of his age, newer and younger players will relate to them more readily. I related to Anduin's themes and his fish out of our story in Mists. And when Legion rolls around and his story evolves into one about growing up and accepting responsibility, right when I was hitting the latter half of my teenage years, I got to grow up alongside Anduin. And through that connection, I got invested into the deeper lore of the franchise. If it wasn't for Anduin, I wouldn't have started reading the books, watching old cutscenes, or learning about all the other characters. Now, for me, it wasn't Anduin Rin. <laughs> it was the one sitting across the table from him that got me into it. it Anduin Rin, while I liked him as a character, it was this one. That really got me into the fucking lore. That really got me into looking at what the fuck is going on here. When he got the message from the Titans and they said, We have fallen, we must rebuild, that blew my fucking mind. That blew my mind. This guy was the most sus motherfucker. I thought this guy was for sure, and he could still be. Near Lethotep, dude. S the Black Prince, the Black Pharaoh, the. the cleansed red dragon egg but not really cleansed at all type shit and uh yeah 
he really got me into it. That's what pulled me into Nazoth and then into Ashara. And then from there, it was just, it was game over. Her character, whose story is very reflective of yes, the is true. newer and younger players will relate to them more readily. I related to Anduin's themes and his fish out of our story, Anduin. And through that connection, I got invested into the deeper lore of the franchise. If it wasn't for Anduin, I wouldn't have started reading the books, watching old cutscenes, or learning about all the other characters. Everyone that gets obsessed with the lore has that one character that leapfrogged them into their addiction. So who do the new players have? Not anyone, really. And if we want Warcraft to live on for another 20 years, we need to start building a revolving door of heroes. What makes this universe special is the world. And if we want to have the depth we need it to, characters need to be born, age, retire, pass on, whatever. Warcraft needs to have legacy. What's Thrall's legacy? Jaina's? Khadgar's? They don't really have one because they're still kicking around and pulling up to the raids. What are these characters going to be known for? Mm, I don't know about that. I don't know about that. I feel like they're... Uh, I feel like they're pretty well established characters with, I don't know, Khadgar is known for like being part of the, the Alliance expedition. I went to Drenor and thwarted the Burning Legion. I mean, he is known as the pupil or uh, yeah, student of Medivh and successor to the guardianship of Tyrus Fall, even though he didn't take the mantle. And I mean, I feel, I don't know. <laughs> Some of these characters are pretty well developed legacies, I guess. Um, I don't know. Vol'jin for me, yeah, okay. I don't think that's what the video is saying. I think he's saying they need new characters. No, I ag I agree with that. But the video is, that is what the video is saying, Tensa. That, that is what he said. I mean, he literally just said, what is their legacy? And he, he just said that. But I do agree, it needs new, more new characters. I agree with that. And I think they're going to take Moira's son and make him a, hopefully a good character. Hopefully Erator ends up being a pretty interesting and good character. We'll, we'll see. I don't know, man. I guess some of these characters, to me, it seems like their legacy... Their story is going to end when, like, the main thing ends, you know? Like, some of these characters are clearly going to be here until the final conflict, you know? Like, the, like they're not going to... Like, the, I feel like their legacy includes them... Like, their story needs to include them being there. Like, does that make sense? Like, if we go and find Azeroth without... Your Khadgar, your Anduin, your Jaina, your Thrall, that's gonna be kind of weird to me, I feel like. Like, I, I, if we go and find Ilun without Tyrande and Malfurion, that's gonna be very weird to me, you know? Like, we need, you know, we need that. I agree with, with that. There's no real reason for Thrall, Jaina, etc. to leave prior to the end of last time. Right, but, the, but like what you're saying, to, to, to agree with you a little bit, to kind of play devil's advocate for myself, if that's the le if that's how the legacy if that's how that ends and that's how the legacy is left then i think that's what you're saying like that's kind of what you're desiring you're still saying there's still a time and a place that makes sense but inevitably there is kind of this eventuality that we are kind of approaching that you know stories and i've i've long held this belief as well stories need to end every good story has an an an, an ending like you need to end it. And that's part of one of the things I've believed about World of Warcraft for a very long time. And part of why once upon a time I was like, death, end it all. Apocalypse, I'm, do the thing, <laughs> you know? And in some ways I kind of still am, but not as not in the same way. And that's because of that same belief of like, you need to fucking write the end, bro. You can't you can't be so afraid to, to finish a story that you end up doing a disservice to the characters in, by the fact that you're not you're not doing it. Like, you've got to fucking do it. And that's kind of one of those inevitabilities. It's one of the lessons that World of Warcraft teaches is kind of like everything ends, you know? Things move in cycles. And if we're not going to be willing to close cycles and start new ones or break cycles that shouldn't be happening, like cycles of abuse or those types of things, then what are we doing? <laughs> you know? We're not really doing anything. We're just kind of existing in the same cycles forever. And so I think that, yeah, I agree with the idea that Legacies need to be left. Characters need to. There needs to be things. This is this is my opinion about why Varian hits so hard and why you know someone just said why the Lich King, in Arthas kind of hits so hard in those ways, right? 
So yeah, there's definitely examples of like how, why it should be done and, and examples of it being done well, in my opinion, like Varian Rin. Um, but yeah, I definitely, I definitely hear where you're coming from. Yeah. Because they're still kicking around and pulling up to the raids. What are these characters going to be known for? A giant wiki page? For a comparison, let's look at Varian. His story started in classic. Oh. We have the whole Anixia clone fiasco, the war in Northrend, his handling of the Horde rebellion against Garrosh, and his influence on Anduin. We firmly remember Varian as a valiant hero who tried his best to be a good father and king, and who lost his life suddenly on the Broken Shore. And because Blizzard put an end to his story, Varian has a solid characterization that isn't muddied by decades of various stories. He also has a massive monument like we're looking at, King's Rest here. Um, I think it's, is it called King's Rest? I don't remember if that's what it's called, probably. But this huge monument here near the harbor of Stormwind. So a character, this is like, this monument is part of the legacy. Like the fact that that character is still felt but that character's like presence still kind of reverberates even though they're gone. That's a fucking legacy. That is like, yeah, Lion's Rest. Lion's Rest. That's a legacy. A lasting legacy for other characters to build on. There you go. To end to his story, Varian has a solid characterization that isn't muddied by decades of various stories. A lasting legacy for other characters to build on. Would Anduin's story be as fulfilling as it is if he didn't lose his father so suddenly? Heck, if Varian was still kicking around, Anduin would probably still be a baby prince begging everyone to stop fighting instead of the complex character that he is. But I don't think any of this is new information to Blizzard. With a renewed focus on building the groundwork for the next 20 years of storytelling, we can already see Blizzard taking strides to give new characters the spotlight, like the newest patch, 1025, where we see two characters take the reins of Alliance factions. Tess Greymane and Chandra's Feathermoon. Well, these are characters that have existed for a long time and have mm -hmm. a lot of fans, they really haven't gotten the spotlight until now. That's because Tarana and Gen had been figureheads of their people for just so long. Both of these characters were really in need of retirement for different reasons. Tarana has honestly just been through too freaking much. And as she said in Dragonflight, she's tired, y'all. As I've said, some of these characters need- I wonder how Elun feels. Fighting that constant battle of wills with the, the great devouring serpent. Wonder how she feels, Tyrande. A break. If you're with tired, Tyrande I bet she's exhausted. Among them. That's why I'm happy to see Chandris get the reins for a bit. And while Chandris has also been there for a lot of these hard times, as an audience, we haven't had her on screen the entire time. So it doesn't clock the same way. As for Tess, she needs to step up because Gen is just a dead-end character now. He's mostly been relegated to just being a surrogate father for Anduin, and kind of ignoring that his own kid exists, which Tess rightly throws some shade his way for. And let's be real, between Hearthstone and the Legion Rogue campaign, people just like Tess way more. She deserves to be a figurehead of Gilneas, and get some proper room to breathe. If we want the Warcraft story to be better, Old man we need yells to start letting go of some of the past. While we all cheer and holler when our favorite characters show up every raid tier, Maybe we should take a step back and consider the lasting implications of dragging these old heads around from patch to patch. While Blizzard is the one that's in an idea, Khaki. The story, I think we as players have a bit of responsibility too. We should care about the legacy of our characters. Ask ourselves how we want to see these stories wrap up. Should our favorite characters settle down, start a family, or die in an epic sacrifice? Maybe mentor the newest generation of heroes. Because as we all know in Warcraft, you either die the hero or you live long enough to be a villain anyways this has been six make sure to subscribe Good and video. hit that notification Great video. Bell. i'll see you guys next some time. would say one of the best videos that we've seen in a long time very good from a little tiny youtuber by the name of 610 got 11k views you either live you either die a hero or you live long enough to become a divisive case <laughs>